Hello, I'm Martin Faas and I will now talk about fisheries. The United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO, collects global catch data from, for marine fisheries since 1950. In the period from 1950 to the late 1980s, global catches have been steadily increasing from less than 20 million tons a year to about 80 million tons a year. And since then, they have been at least not increasing anymore. The catches have been stagnating thus over the last 25 years, despite increasing fishing effort globally, and of course, an increasing and ever improving fishing technology. How can that be? Well, the answer must lie underwater, looking at the fish stocks. So what the FAO also does is to ask experts about their opinion on the state of the stocks that are fished currently. And if you look at those stocks, the percentage of fish that are fish stocks that are fully exploited remain more or less stable during the last 40 years. The fraction of the stocks that are moderately fished declined and the fraction of the stocks that are overfished almost steadily increased and is now around 30%. That shows the reason for non-increasing catches in the last years is that the fish stocks cannot deliver more fish. The reason is ongoing overfishing. So what my aim is for this lecture is to illustrate the economic mechanisms that lead to overfishing. For that purpose, it's useful to look at a simple conceptual model, a model that abstracts from many relevant issues, including age structure of fish populations, multi-species interactions, but also economically relevant interactions on markets, for example, for fish. And finally, it's a static model, but fisheries is a dynamic undertaking. Given all those abstractions, nevertheless, the model is quite useful and delivers powerful insights into the working of fishery. So look at this graph where we have the fishing effort, think of the fishing days, on the horizontal axis, and the yield on the vertical axis. The yield curve typically is first increasing, reaches a maximum, and then is decreasing. To understand what's going on, this is equilibrium, equilibrium yield. It means how that effort, con continuous effort, has an effect on the fish stocks and thus on the yield that these fish stocks can deliver in equilibrium. With that background, it's easy to imagine that if the fish stock is large, effort is low, increasing the effort will increase the yield. Eventually, a maximum will be reached because with continuously increasing effort, eventually the stock decreases and thus the productivity of the stock decreases and ultimately yields have to decrease with increasing effort. In between, there's the maximum of the yield, the maximum of the equilibrium yield, and that is referred to as maximum sustainable yield in the, in the literature and of course also in policy making. The United Nations have agreed on the target that all fisheries worldwide should be managed according to this maximum sustainable yield MSY principle. So that is a declared target in many countries worldwide and by the United Nations. Now to the economics of the problem. We can also interpret the equilibrium yield curve as a curve that gives the yield in monetary terms. So think of the market revenues of the yield that can be de depicted as well by this kind of curve. And that can be compared to the costs of fishing. Obviously the cost of fishing increase with the effort spent. The point where the two curves intersect, the equilibrium yield or equilibrium re revenues curve and the cost curve, that's the point where fishing is just not profitable, just delivers zero profits, right? Revenues are equal to cost. For smaller efforts, so to the left of that point where the two curves intersect, fishing is profitable. The revenues exceed the cost. To the right of that point, fishing incurs losses as cost exceed the revenues. For the maximum sustainable yield, fishing is highly profitable. It would pay for individual fishermen to increase effort and to generate profits. But the maximum sustainable yield is not the economically most desirable point. That's the point for the maximum economic yield. And that's typically at a smaller fishing effort. Why? Because there the fishing costs are even smaller than at the maximum sustainable yield level. The maximum economic yield is also a target for fisheries, for example in Australia, but certainly not 
at the global level. Fisheries management, as you see, needs to reduce the fishing effort below the level where fishing is just not profitable. Right? It should target the maximum economic yield or at least the maximum sustainable yield. But there, fishing is still profitable. It shows, or this, this graph that shows, that in a well-managed fishery that aims at the maximum sustainable yield or even at the maximum economic yield, fishing is a highly profitable undertaking. But that also points to a difficulty of fisheries management because fishing is so profitable at these effort levels and at large stock sizes, it's very difficult to prevent people from not fishing illegally. And what we see globally is a large fraction of illegal and underreported fishing. The graph shows that this goes up to 50% of the declared catches for some types of fish species and obviously more so the more valuable those fish species are. To sum up, global catches are constant at best and there is ongoing overfishing with 30% of the global fish stocks deemed overfished according to the FAO um, experts. Fishing is profitable up to effort levels that are significantly larger than the maximum sustainable yield effort levels. Thus, a fishery that is managed according to the maximum sustainable yield principle, for this, fishing is a highly profitable um, business, and this leads to a strong incentive for illegal fishing and overfishing. But overall, if management is successful, ecology, in the sense of the maximum sustainable yield target, and economics in the sense of increasing the profits from the fishery do not clash, they go hand in hand. Still there are some fisheries worldwide that are subsidized. If effort is subsidized, of course the fishing cost for the individual fishermen go down. That means fishing can even be profitable beyond that level where the true fishing costs are equal to the equilibrium yield. And that means the effort that fishermen have an incentive to exert on the fishery is even larger than the one that would prevail in the absence of any regulation of the fishery. And it would be far larger than the effort that would lead to the maximum sustainable yield and even larger than the, max, the, the effort that would lead to the maximum economic yield. That clearly shows one unanimous recommendation by resource economists for fisheries. Subsidies to the fishery are detrimental both from the economic point of view and from the biological point of view.